And some things are pricing in more right now and others are pricing in less. So the bond market's pricing in less, as is the oil market. But things like tech stocks are pricing in an ISM of 35, which is a deep recession. Hello and welcome to Wealthy Value. In today's video, Real Vision CEOs and global macro investor Roll Powell shares his macro outlook on Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2022, whether or not we're in a recession and his views on the current situation of the economy by looking at the negative GDP growth report. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Roll Powell updates about his thoughts on the contrary and views on inflation if he holds any Bitcoin and why he sees a major event coming in Ethereum. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. I'm going to make it easy for people. Everything is about supply and demand, right? The more supply there is, the cheaper it is. The more demand there is, if supply is stable, the more expensive it gets, which is why we've had the problem with prices because there wasn't supply of oil, but there was demand as everybody came out of pandemic. So what have we got going on in ETH? We've got a gigantic supply shock. So what is the supply shock? The small supply shock is right now, every day, miners are selling ETH. They probably sell 80% of everything they, they receive because they need to pay for their cash flows and their electricity and all of this stuff. So they stop. That's about one or two billion a month. Okay, that's nice. But then after that, we've also got the fact that staking is coming. Mm -hmm. Currently, there's about... 9% of all ETH staked. Now, estimates are it should go up to around 30%. What does that mean? It means 30% of the ETH comes off exchanges, comes out of DeFi, comes out of CeFi, and is untouchable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're removing a gigantic amount of supply from the market, and it's locked for a year. So you can't do yeah. anything about it. Yes, you can trade right. using wrapped, um, you know, um, staked ETH and stuff like that, but it's sure. not the same thing. So you've got this. So you're taking that out of the market. So you've got a huge supply shock. On the other side, you've got a massive demand shock, which is firstly, a lot of institutions wrongly didn't like Bitcoin because of um, ESG concerns. Proof of, proof of stake gets rid of that. Additionally, it now has a yield. So that's something that institutions love is a yield. So now you've got, you need to make one asset allocation decision, which is, I believe in this Web3 technology world. So where do you allocate? Bitcoin or ETH? It's going to be ETH. Why? Because yep. you're going to get something between a 6 and a 10% yield. That's right. So that's extraordinary. Twitter's flinging poo at each other, whether it's a recession or not, and the government stepping in. But basically... Two quarters of negative GDP, not good. Usually that's given a 100% chance of a recession. Uh, we haven't had confirmation yet from things like the ISM survey, the Institute of Supply Manager survey. That usually drops to about 47. I'm expecting that in the next month or two. Um, and then we'll be definitely there. So we're there or thereabouts. Um, it feels that way. The markets have traded that way. We're seeing job cuts coming. You know, we're seeing a lot of evidence and even the bond market's starting to tell us that. So it feels that the recession is here thing that gives you the best guide is something called the ISM survey. And you can Google it, you can find it, it's publicly available. And that basically, anything above 50, the economy's expanding. Anything below 50, it's kind of stalling. And anything below 47 is a recession. And that's been going since about 1947. It's an incredibly good indicator and really useful. So think of it as a kind of weekly version of GDP. So yeah. that gives you a very quick ballpark and what's really interesting that no economists figure out and i don't understand this is it goes up and down it's cyclical right, right. economists have linear projections it's like really yeah. you can show a small child a chart of gdp and they go well it goes up and down so what it does if you see it going down and crossing 50 you know we're likely to be headed into a weak patch or a recession mm -hmm. um, if it's coming up from the lows we can start looking forwards so that's a really simple guide the other way is the bond market's usually very good at this. So once yields start falling, bond markets are generally derive their price action from two things, GDP growth and future inflation. So if bond yields are rallying, it's saying that GDP is probably slowing down. 
i.e. Okay. there's a chance of stimulus to come and bonds look a safe haven. And secondly, that inflation is likely to come down in the future. So yep. those two things alone give you pretty much all you ever need to know. Now, what's really interesting, the, ne the second degree of all of that is there's a bit of magic. So you look at this ISM survey, you go, well, how does it help me with my equity allocation right. or my allocation? All you do is turn it into a year-on-year -year chart. And all of the year-on-year -year charts of every asset from oil to bonds to commodities um, to you know copper to equities to emerging markets to credit spreads are all the same charts. They're driven by the business cycle. So always at turning points, there is no consensus because there's a group that extrapolates the recent trend and says that's going to continue. And there's a group that extrapolates a mean reversion. Now, the question is here is more complicated because we've got these supply issues. We've got you know, onshoring, yep. we've got other things that are muddying the equation. And what we've got is this big debate. So myself, David Rosenberg, and and maybe Yuri and a few others kind of think we probably mean revert because of debt, demographics, yep. technology, that inflation's not a long term issue. But there's a whole other group who I really respect who are saying, no, you're dead wrong. Inflation's sticky, it's here to say and it's a big problem. You know, one of the things I, you know, people talk about agriculture right now, you know, we're going to have this food crisis. Step back and look at the inflation adjusted prices of agriculture for the last 50 years. It's gone down. Yep. Why? It's gone down. Even though the population of the world has doubled, it's gone down because of technology. Technology. Absolutely. Look at what happened with the shale revolution. Why did oil fall so fast in kind of the 2016, 18? It's because shale yep. was a new technology. So what people are saying right now is none of the supply issues can be solved by technology. But you know, because you're closer to it and where you're based, is that everybody's trying to solve it. So yep. everybody's trying to solve because the super normal profits in solving supply issues. So right. you focus your attention, and your capital on solving it and you'll make money. Not because I don't like Bitcoin or don't think it goes up. I just think it goes up less. Yeah. You know, Yep. We're looking at this as a technology and a network adoption model. So you want to back the te the network that's growing the fastest and has the most number of applications. Yep. That's the safest, easiest allocation. That happens to be ETH. Now, other earlier stage tokens, whether it's Solana or ABAX or whatever, are getting earlier on the adoption curve. So you get that accelerated phase. So they'll probably outperform. But if you're just thinking the safe, easy bet, we're now looking at the internet. The money of the internet is ETH currently. Nothing is exchanged in That's Bitcoin. Right. I mean, literally nothing. So the money of the internet is ETH. DeFi is built on ETH. NFTs are built on ETH. All of this is being built on ETH. What's left? Yes, it's not fast enough. So people go to other chains for that. It's a bit more expensive. People go to other chains. But the broad encompassing of the space, this is the simple, easiest bet to take. By the way, do you want to buy and sell crypto through your bank account? Today's video is sponsored by Quippy, an app that brings together the most popular financial crypto and fiat services in one ecosystem. Quippy is a non-custody, decentralized, and centralized wallet simultaneously. Use both of these options for the best user experience. You can link all your accounts to a single dashboard, convert funds between digital and fiat, and manage money in multiple currencies. I'll show you how easy it is. This is how you open a multi-currency Ivan account to manage euros. You can also select British pounds or American dollars. Here's how you top up your mobile phone using Quippy. Select mobile top up, type the name or phone number of the contact and select the amount you'd like to top up. Here's how you can import an external wallet to Quippy even if you deleted it. Click on add wallet import and select the currency. You can import through private key or recovery phrase. Remember to make a backup of your digital currency wallet. When you see wallet needs backup, tap create. Read the checklist and remember your recovery phrase. Quippy is decentralized, secure, and free. Choose either euros, pounds, or dollars and start using your new account in minutes. Physical prepaid bank cards will be available soon, and you can count on 24-7 support in multiple languages. So what are your thoughts about Roll's perspective on Bitcoin versus Ethereum debate? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.